spiritual journey looks so much like a bed of roses, and it's not. Hey, that, right? And they're like, man, but dude, what? Like, <laughs> like, hey, man, I'm not perfect. You know? <laughs> I'm still working on me. But yeah, be able yeah. to be transparent, because man, too often we pre- we perpetuate we we like to perpetuate the perception of perfection. You're doing good, and when you're doing for God, a lot of times, what happens is that the devil throws darts in your way. And he will even sometimes trip you up to fall down. So people could look at you and be like, is that the same girl that's on the praise team singing? Is that the same guy that was playing the um, the piano? Those type of questions arise in people's minds, especially when you're trying to do things with God the devil who tries to slip you up. But I will tell you, keep on keeping on. Sometimes we have distorted predictions. God designed our mind to be able to process a potential outcome. That is something that other creatures don't necessarily have the ability to do. We have the ability. That is a God design. Having God's DNA in us, he gave us a a fraction of who he is and his ability to see the from the beginning and the end. And he allowed us to be able to, to project with our thoughts, what could the potential outcome be if I X, Y, Z? Hello, 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 and welcome to another exciting episode of Zoom Hope Live. Um, I've been looking forward to today from a very long time, and our guests also, they have been looking forward to it, as we will be talking about education as a tool for social mobilization. Yeah, we want to get up on top of the ladder. Well, there is a tool that we're gonna talk about today. So um, let's just um, get some stuff out the way. If you have not known, well, you can find us on zoomhopelive.org. <clears throat> so please go over to Zoom Hope Live and we want you to follow us on our um, various social media angles, whether it's Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, whatever it is. And by the way, talking about YouTube, we want you to please subscribe. So what I told you, this guy, he is not going to stop and give me the chance to host the show unless you subscribe. So please subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. We promise we're gonna subscribe. We're gonna subscribe, please. Yeah, thank you, sir. All right, so please subscribe, hit that subscription bell. It's just for you to make sure that you do not miss any of the contents that we're giving out. Um, It can be beneficial to your organization, to your church, um, whatever it is, and for you personally. So please subscribe and ring the notification bell. We also want you to engage yourself in what is happening here. Don't just watch. I want you to immerse yourself in the conversation. So please, we're looking for your comments as well as we are looking out for those questions so we can adjust, address them when we reach the viewers' question segment. Um, with that being said, we are going to have an awesome time today, and I will just go right ahead and bring on our first guest, um, who is none other than Shanoi Coombs. So, Shanoi, how are you doing? Hi, Larry. I'm great. Thank you so much for having me. And greetings from Jamaica. Yes, yes. I bless. I bless. It it is so good to see you. Um, We were sharing before we um, come on live that we haven't seen each other for years. Years. (laughs) For years. But thank Mm -hmm. you so much, Larry. This is such an excellent initiative. And I'm super happy to be here to share a little bit more about my own journey and then also right. just generally how education can be a tool for social mobilization. Great, great. Um, well, I know you from you were a child like my, myself, right? Um, <laughs> yes. The third going from one crusade to the other and also yes. within the educational setting at high school. Um, yes. and, 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 you know, your experience and knowing what you have gone through, you know, a little bit and, and seeing you, um, 
I am just blessed to see the way in which you have achieved. Um, but many persons might not know who is Shanoi. So yeah. tell us a little bit who is Shanoi Cruz. Hi. So for those of you who are tuning in, I'm Shanoi. I'm CEO for Infinity Integrated. That's a development communications agency based in Jamaica, but largely servicing the Caribbean as well as global clients. Mm -hmm. I studied communications at the bachelor's level. I did media and communications, but I focused on social and behavior change. So more about communication and using that for good. And then at the master's level, I studied intercultural communications and mm -hmm. international development. Awesome. I was fortunate throughout my educational journey to have been the recipient of several scholarships, which really helped to make my life a little better. I mean, leaving from high school, going into sixth form and then to university, yeah. I would have gotten a multiple scholarships at the university level. The most prestigious being the principal scholarship for excellent excellence. That was a full scholarship covered all of my expenses, took off lots of pressure off my parents. Oh, and yes. then at the master's level, I was also the recipient of the prestigious Shevening Scholarship to study in the UK. So in a bubble, you know, in summary, this is a little bit about what I do and also how education has really opened up the path for me as well. Right, right, right. Um, so that, that's just a little bit um, of, yes. you know, you know, how the Lord has blessed you um, even in your educational pursuit. And that has definite, definitely um, become, you know, a tool um, for your social mobilization. So looking forward to the chit chat and we know it will be informative. So let's Thank talk you. a little bit, Shanoi. All right. All right. So um, the next person, of course, um, is right here in the Bahamas. And that is Colin Hutchinson, Mr. Hutchinson. It is so good to have you, and um, we hope that you get the chance to share the link with at least a couple of your students um, at, you know, one of my favorite school here um, in really? the Bahamas. Yes, honestly, um, yeah. I've had some good times, um, yeah. you know, in mentorship and engaging the young men and women at your institution. So, what have you been up to? Well, I have been working hard. <laughs> uh, work never stops for me. Um, just to let everyone know, um, as Mr. Green said, I'm Colin Hutchinson, native, native of Jamaica, proud mm -hmm. graduate of Herbert Morrison from Montego Bay. <laughs> All right. Many people think about Cornwall College when they think of schools in Montego Bay, but I went to Herbert Morrison. Also, yes. attended CAST at the time. For most people, that's youth tech now. Mm hmm went to Sam Sharp Teachers College, Western Carolina University, mm -hmm. and um, the son of a teacher, ironically, who was right. teaching for 43 years. Mm. So I just continued in the education field. I am currently in charge of special education for the Northern District of the Bahamas. Yes. I'm actually also one of the main facilitators for people who don't know what that is. I have mm. to keep recurring workshops for teachers in special education and also in uh, junior high and primary schools. And I also, am a, most people don't know, I'm also one of the persons who helped to craft what is called an IEP for this country. So mm. it's a lot of work, always ongoing. So right, that's who right, I am. Right, right. Uh, awesome, awesome. So, um, well, um, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. It's always good to see um, men um who are engaged we are rare yes 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 um as i reflect um there uh, there's there are literally a handful of men um that were really a part of my educational process process within um the school level um so it's good to see you as one of those of course with our producer as well um kevon spence um well thank you so much and we're looking forward to talk no problem um, a little bit yeah, so um, the next person that we will um, look at is none other than Sharifa, um, Dr. Sharifa Burchell, who is here with us um, all the way from Loma Linda, California. Um, Sharifa, how are you doing? Hi, Larry. I'm doing so great today. It's bright and sunny outside. I am looking at the trees and everything outside and I'm, I'm doing really well. Blessed to be here. Thank you so much for the invitation. Awesome. So from senior work ethics um, on a day to day and, um, you know, watching and seeing you being 
I'm a valedictorian. And even just, just watching you then from afar and seeing you just uh, doing so well in terms of your educational pursuit, um, it, it, it is something to awe about. Um, but Thank many persons so don't know who is Sharifa. <laughs> uh, yeah, apart if, if they're watching your Facebook or you know um, from here to there, see certain interview, they would know. Um, but perhaps not some of those on the Zumo um, channel. So tell us okay. a little bit who is Sharifa. Okay, well, you know, as I was listening to Shanoi and Colin, I realized that we have things in common. Yes. So like Shanoi, when I went to college, let's start with, with Colin first. I also mm -hmm. went to school in Montego Bay and my sister went to Herbert Morris and Colin. And um, I really love it. It's a great school. I went to Montego Bay High School for girls, however, which, you know, it's just the best school. But anyway, yes. um, <laughs> yeah, after I left high school, I went to Northern Caribbean University, which is where I met you, Larry. Yeah. And um, like Shano, I also received the President's Award for Excellence, which was a full tuition scholarship. Right. So that was really a great help. Took a great load off of probably not my parents because I'm not sure who was going to pay um, my tuition at the time uh, because we didn't have that sort of money, but God made the way and I'm super grateful for that. Yeah. Um, I've had a lot of people in my life who have helped me to be where I am right now. And we'll talk more about that as we go throughout the discussion. Uh, yeah. But went through NCU, did my bachelor's degree in biology as a type of a pre-med degree. And then I went on to come to Loma Linda in California here to do my PhD in physiology, which after I completed, I went back home to serve at NCU for a number of years as an assistant professor. I was teaching there for a while, which was really great learning experience for me. Um, and now I'm back in Loma Linda doing medicine, which has been a lifelong dream. I'm very excited to be here. It is a lot of work. It's very hard, uh, yes. but I really enjoy it. Um, and so, yeah, so that's what I'm doing. And I try to use my story as a way to inspire others. So I share snippets of my story from day to day through my Instagram page um, that I created specifically for that Dr. Reef on the go, as well as a blog page um, that I created also to share my story and help to inspire others to find their own stories. Awesome, awesome. We, we, we will wish to uh, make sure that we share those links um, throughout um, so that persons can benefit um, from what you are offering. So we're looking forward to um, the discussion, Shirley, but there are some videos that I want um, those of you who are watching to begin to um, set up yourself for this kind of success that you're hearing um, our guests um, talking about. Um, so um, there, there are three videos that we're going to play at this time. Um, so the first will be the Chevron. Um, I believe I would get that right. Shanoi might be able to correct me. Um, scholarship video. So we want you to look at that. And then we, we want to see what Loma Linda University is about. So we'll take a snapshot at that. And then we will hear from our featured artist, K. Anthony. God is good. <music> Okay, so we'll go to the... Loma Linda University is a unique place because of the integration of faith and healthcare. We are located in Southern California and we are one of only two faith-based academic medical complexes in the nation, where our mission is to continue the teaching and healing ministry of Jesus Christ. Loma Linda University has been an innovator in medical research by pioneering proton cancer treatment and infant heart transplant. And our level one trauma center will continue to advance quality healthcare and education with our new adult and children's hospital. As an academic medical complex, our eight schools are all located on the same campus as our medical center. This provides distinct opportunities for interdisciplinary work with students from all of our programs. 
The professors are what really makes Loma Linda special. They truly care about my success, not only academically, but also spiritually and personally. And because of the smaller class sizes, I really feel like I get personalized attention from the professors. I really enjoy the lifestyle promoted here at LU. They encourage us to live a balanced life of diet, exercise, social activities, and spiritual life. This is where our motto, to make men whole, comes from. I love exercising at the Wellness Center. They provide opportunities to de-stress and relax with friends through intramurals and exercise. And since we're only one hour from the beach and one hour from the mountains, there are all kinds of opportunities for amazing weekend adventures. I also like the opportunity to travel abroad and share what I've learned with those in need. And even here in our own community, there are many ways to get involved with outreach. Because of Loma Linda's emphasis in mission and outreach, I truly believe that my career is making a difference in the world. Loma Linda is a unique place. It's where we care more about who you are than what you know. We take this opportunity to combine faith and healthcare training to produce unique professionals. Saludos. Bienvenido a tu casa, Antillian Adventist University. Nos complace nuevamente abrir nuestras puertas para recibirte en el inicio de este semestre académico 2021. Son muchos los retos que hemos enfrentado para llegar a este gran día, pues como todo en la vida, la recompensa llega luego del esfuerzo. Hemos trabajado arduamente cuidando cada detalle para que te sientas seguro en tu campus y recibas el servicio que mereces. Nuestro equipo de trabajo, docentes y administrativos están listos para ayudarte a alcanzar tu meta de iniciar o completar tus estudios, que sabemos que hoy es más importante que nunca. Nos espera un grandioso trayecto juntos en el que te aseguramos vas a desarrollar tu potencial al máximo para descubrir la mejor versión de ti. en la que el conocimiento, la espiritualidad y los valores te guiarán para crecer profesionalmente mientras sirves a otros y a tu comunidad. Es el momento, tu momento. Ven a vivir la verdadera experiencia universitaria.
giving me happiness and joy. Oh, 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 oh. The time is giving me hope when I was lost. God, 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 God is good. He opened up some doors when I was in need. So I got to let you know. So that's a lot of promo, and of course, it ends perfectly, reminding us that God, He is good. Um, we're gonna jump right into the question, and I'll ask Shanoi for you to um, engage um, this one um, firstly. Um, what is education, and how does it influence a person's social and economic well being? Right, great question, Larry. Uh, so education for me, you know, it's a means of acquiring knowledge. So let me start with what people know as the most common definition of, of education. It's a means by which we acquire knowledge, often in a formal sort of setting. So it may be an educational institution, it may be a training yeah. session. But an often overlooked definition of education is also the exchange of knowledge. So it's not just about right. acquiring, it is also imparting knowledge. So I particularly like highlighting that because I always say that within educational sectors, within educational systems, mm -hmm. teachers should be as open to learning as they are to the teaching. So I think a right. crucial thing for me in making the distinction with what education is, it's a give and take. Right. And I particularly wanted to raise that because I remember uh, in high school, I had a teacher and he once wrote on my report that I was disruptive. And the basis for that was because I never learned just by you telling me that that's how something is. It was always a process where I needed to understand why something was the way it was before it made sense to me. So even as I progressed to university, my friends would say, oh, but you don't study or we don't see you studying or, you know, it's not the standard scale for me because once I grasp something. And so in those classes, I'd be the first to raise my hands and I'd say, but why is it this way and not that way? Or how did we arrive at that? And so my teacher felt challenged. He did not appreciate me asking him to think beyond what he had learned to sort of explain it in a way that it did not just become relatable, but it became a case where you know it was easier to understand. Right. You could see from point A to point B, et cetera. So in my definition for education, I want to, to, to you know, highlight that whole process of reciprocating, learning, right. being open to teaching, etc. And then for the second half of your question in terms of what it means for social mobility, right. I will say that even in my own life, I sit and look back at where I started from and mm -hmm. where I'm at now. I grew up in rural Jamaica. Well, I was between uh, St. Catherine as in Spanish downside and rural Jamaica, etc. back and forth. And so right. over time, when I look at my different circumstances, I know my parents, for example, probably wouldn't have been able to single handedly fund my dreams or my goals in terms of where I wanted to be. And yeah. so education has opened those doors for me. And so I know for a fact that education can be a tool for social mobility. Right. And so people will be there and say, oh, yeah, but you don't need to go to university or you don't need to do this and that. 
And I think, again, based on how you define education, people may find there are many parts that you can use education to foster social mobility. So education for one person may look like a technical program. It may look like a skill set that they're developing. True. Education for another person may be to go to their PhD level, like Sharifa. Education for yet another person may be to say, all right, I just want to go to the bachelor's level. So for many different people, education can mean different things. But I think when we start with the acquisition and the exchange of knowledge, then it opens up the yes. scope how it can help us to achieve. For me personally, as I mentioned, I started off in media and communications. So sure, there were probably things I could have gone on the internet to find, etc. But I found that the environment that the education sector created was one where I got the chance to probe. I said to people, I learn in a very active way and I need to yes. understand things. And I think that has served me well in my line of work. As a development communications practitioner, I'm sometimes stuck with documents 100 and something pages high. I have to probe mm -hmm. through, I have to extract the meaningful information. And I think education for me has equipped me to be in a position do to that. not only run my business, but to do that and to earn while doing that as well. So I will pause right, right. there because as we go along, I'm sure I'll have the opportunity to speak yes, loads more yes. about how education has contributed to my own social mobility and that of others. Yes. Awesome. I was I was um, literally pulled in um, from from the, the standpoint where you speak in you, you, you know speak about the mutuality um, that must be involved within the educational process, and not only as you might indicated that it challenges um, the, the the teacher, but it also challenges um, the student to make sure that you equip yourself even before you go within um you know a, a setting where you will um learn to make sure that you can participate um in the uh contribute in the learning process and i also appreciate also um the, the fact of you relating that education for you it's a personal um, thing because you have seen where it has lived you um personally um so colin um and sharifa um what, what kind of contribution do you have? I'll take it respectively, just to say. Okay, well, thank you. Um, well, as she said earlier, um, education is basically the exchange of yeah. knowledge between both the person who is teaching and the person who is being taught. Because especially as a teacher, I can tell you from my own experience, yeah. I have learned a lot from students mm -hmm. to make me a better person and in doing so deliver what i have to deliver the content or the experience better for that person who is under my tutelage right now for for um let us say the impact that it has as a tool the influence on the person socially and economically um education is important because it helps it helps students as I said, I'm speaking from the perspective of a teacher. It helps them to progress socially. That's very important because many students may come from an environment where they are not taught right from wrong. And ironically, education is what often assists most persons to know what is right and what is wrong. Some of us may take it for granted because of the environment in which we were um, grown but education actually helps a lot of students who may not have been exposed to that quality education at home to know right from wrong. So that can help them to function better in society, to know that, okay, certain things may be acceptable or certain things are not acceptable. Um, also, it, education helps to increase uh, the participation, let us say, of individuals within a democratic society. We have all sorts of society, but I'm talking more from a democratic standpoint because people can be informed, make decisions that are in their or their community's best interest, and in doing so, not only elevate themselves, but it can also lay the groundwork for those who are coming behind them, their children or their children's children, whichever generation is to come. Yeah. Um, also, one thing that is overlooked that I tend to speak a lot about to my colleagues is that education builds trustworthiness and competence. A lot of people tend to overlook that. 
we tend to trust people who are educated that right. they will do what is right or they are mm -hmm. competent. Yeah. If if someone is not educated in a field, let's just say you you have a problem with your with your motor car, you're gonna take it to a gentleman who you who may not have any form of education because remember there are three there are basically three forms of education: formal, informal, and non-formal. Mm -hmm. Now they may have learned from any of those um, forms of education, but if someone does not know what they are doing there will be no trust on that individual to say, hey, they will resolve my problem right. or for them. They may not build self-worth or brand so that they can, let us say, climb the ladder of success mm -hmm. to go further in society. And of course, through education for all of us, I can speak from my own personal perspective and for my siblings, it, it will improve your, your living conditions because you can earn more, you're capable of of basically achieving equity in society and it also will help you a lot of people in jamaica we hear a lot of cries for we want justice if people are educated they will know where they can get justice and how they can get justice right so it is important in helping in helping people socially and ec economically all right? right i'll continue further on that i'll allow the guests to continue yeah, I'd actually love to agree with both the previous preventers on their definitions right. of education and their own experience of education. I really love what you said, Shanoi, about experience being a two um, education being a two way street. I've always taught my students that they must be very active learners um, right. because that's the only way you really truly learn something. And when you teach something to someone else, that's when you know that you really know it. Um, so that's always been something that I strongly believe in. But I'd like to add to the discussion that I think education must be something that enlightens you and elevates you. If it is not something that makes you go higher than the level where you were before, then I don't think you were truly educated. So we can have people who have bachelor's degrees and PhDs who are not really educated. You know what I'm right. saying? Um, and right. so as we also mentioned that education can be in different spheres, we can have the formal academic education in a university and so forth. But I think mm -hmm. a, um, more important than that, I think is sometimes our relational type of education. How do mm -hmm. we love people? How do we receive love from someone else? That type of education I think is vital. And then spiritually and psychologically, how do we take care of our mental health? How do we relate to people who have mental health issues or who are struggling through different situations? That type of education right, is important right. for how the society runs. Um, and then financial education, how do we make money? How do we manage money? You know, um, all right. of these things is really what makes the world go around and really what makes a society elevate itself. And so those are things I think we need to incorporate when we think about our definitions of education, not just, okay, I'm going to sit in a classroom and I'm going to learn how to do a surgery <laughs> or how to do certain math yeah. problems or whatever it is. But uh, yes, a whole person kind of education that incorporates all the different aspects of who we are because we're not just uh, one type of being. There are different right. components to who we are and we must be able to educate all those different components. Um, so yeah, I think that's what education is. And, and I think if we educate ourselves in that manner where we um, are not only being enlightened, but elevated, then that type of education that incorporates all of the different parts of who we are must, there's no way it cannot elevate you socially and economically. So it's just incorporated in the education itself that it must do that for you. And while I'm here, I'd just like to shout out my niece and my best friend who commented in the chat. DJ Nay, hi, and Natisha, good to see you guys. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So, so we're, we're, we're looking for you to um, post your question. Um, you get the shout out. Um, so please um, send a question or comment. Um, uh, but, but it's very informative um, based upon what you have shared. Um, and I can already see persons start to relax to say, guess what? Um, this is more than just saying going into the classroom, but mm -hmm. it, it, it is some, it is saying, give myself the opportunity to be holistically impacted. And, um, as you're talking, um, I'm getting from you that you're sharing your own experience and, um, well, apart from Colin, Colin, um, seem to come from, you know, a really affluent family uh, based upon his introduction. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but but um, just by listening um, to what um, um, 
you know, uh, Sharifa and Shanoi has been saying, and I know Colin um, as well, <laughs> it, it, it has been a journey um, to get to where you are now. Um, so, so the other question on my mind as it relates to education is that education is used as a tool for reaching high places, um, a, lad a ladder as it were, um, and we climb the rug to reach up higher. Uh, now, many students have sold their souls trading for sex, trading sex for grades and tuition um, just to get ahead because of their situation. So the question that is on my mind, and by the way, this is a question coming from um, Colin Major. So it has been polled before. Um, so it, it's out there. This is what person's thinking. How can we avoid the temptation to make this shortcut? Um, we, we could start with you, Sharifa, and then we'll have a discussion. Let, let's just be discussional on this point. Okay. Um, you know, I think when I think about how we would give in to that temptation of taking that shortcut, the thing that comes to mind is that a lot of the times when we think about education and what we want to be in life and how much money we want to have, we start mm -hmm. thinking, oh man, when I get this degree, I'm going to be happy. When I get this A in this class, I'm going to be happy. When I have right. this amount of money, I'm going to be happy. When I have a car, I'm going to be happy. All of those things. And so we keep thinking of the destination. Yes. And that's all we can think to be happy. And that's all we think that we just need to get here and whatever it takes will be a means to an end. Yeah, but I'd like yeah. to kind of readjust our focus to think that not just the destination is the focus, but the journey is the destination. Mm. I've been on such a tremendous journey and I would not trade that journey for anything. And I, I always encourage people and it's something that I do in my own life. I try to enjoy each phase of the journey. Like there's no one set place we're trying to get to. And even when we get that degree, when we get that job, when we have that car, there's going to be something else that we want to go after. So the journey must in fact be the destination. And so we have to enjoy each phase along the journey. So when I'm going through school and I don't have any money, like right now, Mm -hmm. I'm not like stressed out and going crazy because right. I know I can still enjoy different aspects of this journey while I'm here. There's so many things to be thankful for and so many things to keep me going. And so um, that's one of the things that I think we need to keep in mind that will help us to say, no, I don't need to take a shortcut for this. When I was about to go into college, I, as, I, as I mentioned, I grew up um, I grew up poor, what we would call poor, you know, so I didn't have any money to pay. Uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars for tuition each term yeah. um, but my pastor took me to the university and we had an interview my best friend and I who commented earlier and we both got the president's award for excellence and but I've never felt that I needed to to shortcut my way to get um, to get tuition paid or to get a grade because I've learned through all of these experiences along my journey that I can trust God, that if he's called me to a certain place, he will take me there. Which brings me to the second point about this is that I think when we're thinking about this, the thing that we must bring to mind is, what is my purpose and mm -hmm. what is my calling? Yeah. How do I get to the point in life where I'm now going to live my purpose and live the calling that God has placed on my life? The things that I'm doing right now or that I'm contemplating to do, the things that I want to do, how do they align with who I am, with who I'm called to be, and what my purpose is in this life? If they don't align, once we have set those lines to say, this is my purpose, this is what I believe God has placed me on this earth for, this is what God has called me to be, this is who I am as a yeah. child of God, this is who I am. Once we have set those lines and established those definitions, then uh -huh. it will be so much easier to not give into the temptation to say, I must have sex with this person because I need money to go to school or I need to get an right. A, otherwise I'm not going to get this job. Once we have established who we are, then we can say, this does not align with who I am. This does not align with my purpose or my calling. So I'm not going to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, you know, and and and, you know that, that that's a lot it's a lot um um but but we all can follow it um because it it, it, it you, you share it out so well um and you you make this point that i believe everyone need to um just think back on it the journey is the destination 
the journey is the destiny. That's not easy to um accept when you are going through the pain. You are, it's going not. Through, yeah, and you know you don't have the money. That's a part of the journey. So you're saying um when we shortcut ourselves or short change ourselves by selling ourselves or doing other um, compromising thing in the journey, we are actually robbing ourselves of that testimony of that joy of yes. actually yes. appreciating the different places where mm -hmm. God is taking us. Um, yes. So rather than just focusing, I want to get out so I can buy a car, get a house, make some money. But mm -hmm. God has, you're saying, a steeper plan, a, a, a greater plan um, in yes. store. Yeah. Yeah. I Definitely. appreciate that. <laughs> Okay, I, 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 that was that wasn't supposed yeah. to be a silent moment. I was just wondering. No. <laughs> yeah, I definitely think that as we go along the journey and we go through these different rough patches, then we learn to have more faith, right. and we learn to see exactly where God is leading us. So I, I wouldn't trade that for the world. And we all have different journeys, and I think that's something that we definitely have to learn to to appreciate. Okay, thank you so much. All right, so let let, let me hear you, Shanoi. All right, I, I'm sure you saw me nodding a lot um, when um, yes, Sharifa was speaking because as a woman as well, within different mm -hmm. educational spaces, I think a key thing is to start with what are your values, right? What are your values and what are the things that you'll not compromise on? And then secondly, I would say to people in your education acquisition and your social and, up and mobile, your social and economic mobility, it's important to ask yourself, Am I satisfied with myself? Or when you're sitting in those quiet moments, you know, am I happy with who I have become? And who you have become cannot only be limited to your educational achievement. It really should not just be to say, okay, I have achieved the highest level of educational att attainment. A book that has been pivotal in my life has been The Purpose Driven Life. And The Purpose Driven Life speaks about the fact that we're all here for a purpose, right? And the minute you find that purpose, it's like your life starts to take a very meaningful path. It's like things mm -hmm. start to fall within mm -hmm. your divine order. Right. And so I knew early, and I, I think from about grade 10 or grade 11, I, I did a feature and it was called Student of the Week at the time. And in my Student of the Week feature, my title at grade 10 said, I want to help people. And I didn't know what format that would take yet. I know I started off saying I wanted to be a teacher because my mother was a teacher. And as time evolved and I decided to go into communications, I knew personally, I didn't want to just be a communicator who was working with different companies or brands, for example, that were right, promoting right, smoking right. or promoting drinking or promoting unhealthy practices, You know, the kinds of foods we eat, the kind of lifestyles that we're embracing. And so I chose instead that my path would have been development communications, which focuses mm -hmm. on using communication for positive. So if you've ever seen something like a hand washing campaign, if you have seen something that is encouraging people, you know, two, two children are better than too many, for example, if you're seeing <coughs> campaign that are telling, you know, present all the other alleys that you're in your child's life, economically, emotionally, et cetera. So yeah. my line of work focuses a lot on how we can use communications in different space to have meaningful impact in people's lives. And when I look back, if I had gone to a point where I'd compromise my values, That's right? Yes. And I would have said, I'm going to take the shortcut and I'm going to sleep with my professor to get a grade or I'm going to yes. sleep my way up the corporate ladder. Mm -hmm. And fine, I would have achieved the economical benefits. But when I sit in those small still moments, and yes. my value or my purpose is to use communication to effect good. But then in my personal life, I had to sleep with someone to get there. There's a disconnect. And right. so in those moments, you're starting to sit and you're starting to say, have I truly achieved what True. I wanted to? Right. Now, I think a part of it is that some people feel at times like they're backed into a corner. There's mm. some semblance of pressures, et cetera. And so they feel that this is inescapable. But I'm True. here to tell you that you can, in fact, make your way to the top and still have right. your values in check. Right. If it is that you see it comes to a point where you have to be choosing between one or the other, that's not the path for you, yes. right? 
And I believe, as I say, that once you have, and I'd recommend the book, The Purpose Driven Life, you know, start right. to I'll look at, it starts off by saying we're all here for a purpose. And once you find that purpose and work accordingly, nothing else will matter. All the twists and turns, the mistakes you made along the sideline, it will start to fall mm -hmm. behind you because you know that you're working towards an end goal. And so I would say for right. the persons who face the temptation, and in trying to get to the social mobility, really think about what top and my money will make me happy. But in those small moments, you know, those moments when you're in tune with your yes. inner voice and you're there and saying, I've accomplished yeah. it. Are you really happy at the path you took to get there? And if your right. answer is no, then you would have gotten, you would have used education to get the economic benefits but then mm -hmm. there are other emotional turmoils that you would have experienced. So I always will say, yeah. start with your values, start with your purpose, and always consciously think, when I get to the top and I sit in my quiet moments, will I be truly happy with how I've gotten there? Yes, yes. And, 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 and that's, that's, that's what really matters, right? Um, because it's to know that you are fulfilled um, inside. And... You know, I'm, I'm reading this book right now. It's called The Deeply Formed Life. And um, it, it, it's about, it, I'm not focused on the surface. Yeah, the surface is okay. But um, I am concerned about the root. Um, and, 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 you know, the things that we do behind the door, behind, you know, the closet, uh, that's important and make sure we take the right path. And I'm getting that from you, Shanoi, which is very important. And I thought about something that Colin um, said just before um, that connects with you. Uh, when he was relating, when you were relating, Colin, on um, saying you, you want someone who would have, you know, value education, right? Your value for education, it, it, it speaks with the paths that you take. To actually achieve it and if if you are selling a product and you ended up selling it to someone whom you have sold yourself to mm -hmm. that person really gonna know behind um you know well you know i i don't think i want to invest in your company because i know the path that you have taken to get to where you are um so it can even prevent us from reaching our aspiration. Um, and I got that from your point as well, Shanoi. So Colin, let me hear you. And then we're going to jump over to um, the viewers. Um, there's something there. Um, OK, go. Um, Sharifa, you can add. Um, so, <laughs> Yeah, sure. I just want to make one, one quick point. I just think that some of the times when we choose to go these routes, um, in addition to what Shanoi said, is that sometimes we think that maybe we might fail if we just go ahead on it on our own. And that fear of failure, that fear that maybe this business might not work out if I don't sleep my way to the top or sleep my way into forming the connections or the network that will help me to establish it, um, then it won't work out and I won't get my dreams. And then that fear of failures just pushes us into doing something that we would not otherwise have done. So I think that's what we would probably have to get over that fear of failure and know that all that we need is already within us. We just have to use the gifts that we've already been entrusted with to push towards the goals that we have. And once we get on that road, as Shanoi said, once you find your purpose in this life, almost everything makes sense. And once you get on that road and you start working towards it, you realize that right. you're, you're not going to fail. Like you might have moments when you feel down and things are not really working out how you want to, but you learn through every single one of these what we call failures. And it's not the end of the world if you fail at something. So we get over that fear of failure and know that we can still do it even if we don't sleep our way to the top or some other yeah. way that demeans our values or our integrity in order True. to get the things that we want. Thanks for that contribution. Yes, yes, yes. Awesome. Yeah, go ahead, Colin. Yeah. two things to what was said by Shanoi and Sharifa. Um, the thing is to avoid something like that. And it's ironic because when I saw it, I recall an incident when I was in college that actually became public to everybody where somebody 
sold themselves basically for grades um, that I will not get into, but it was public knowledge and it came back to actually haunt and embarrass the young lady. But for my students, particularly the males, I will speak to them that um, because when, when we talk about issues such as this, to be honest, we often overlook the males right. because it greatly affects females, but we often overlook the males. And because I have mostly male students, I have to try and inculcate in their minds that one of the most important things you have to do as a man is value yourself. You have to value yourself. You're important. No matter what people tell you, no matter what you see on television, no matter what you see around, you have to value yourself because they have actually seen it with even me as their teacher. Mm -hmm. They've seen it with me, their teacher, because they have they've seen people approach their teacher with proposal. There's proposals. They have been there and heard proposals and teacher right there with them and say no or you understand. So you have to value yourself. That's the first and most important thing. You also have to get better friends. A lot of us, we are sociable and we surround ourselves with really negative or toxic people and we don't even know it. You have to get better friends because remember, friends have an influence on all of us. Yes. So you have to surround yourself with better friends who are going to say, hey, you know what? Don't do this because I wouldn't do it. Or let us not do it. Let us work because guess what? We all know this old adage that experience teaches wisdom. Right. So if you don't have experience in working toward what you need, how can you really be wise to whatever it is that you gain? Or how can you appreciate the things that you are going to get? Mm -hmm. Because let's, let's look at it. Let's be fair. Easy come, easy go. Now, yeah. it's easy for me to say I understand. But we have to put in person's mind that with everything that comes quickly or easily, it also will go quickly and right. easily because right. there's a price to pay all right it 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 comes around to basically education it comes back to education in this regard that um we have to separate the need to earn a livelihood from what you want to contribute a lot yeah. of us don't do that you definitely have to separate the fact that okay i want to achieve this and yeah. i must have it Versus, okay, you're going to do that, but what do you hope to contribute at the end of it? Yes. You're going to be like, you're going to be like a kidney bean, what we call red peas. Right. The other day I was opening up some red peas and I was feeling them. And funny enough, I never knew they could be hollow on the inside of you. Yeah. I never had that experience. So there, you may end up like a kidney bean. You may be there present but you have nothing on the inside, no substance, no experience to even pass on. Mm -hmm. Because remember, peas, um, we get the plant from the pea itself. So if you were to take that hollow plant and plant it, you now are to turn and assist somebody further down. What can you offer to that person? Yes. You achieved, but what experience do you have to pass on? What appreciation can that person gain from your own story where you valid yourself? and you set those long-term goals so you can achieve what it is that you wanted to achieve. Because as we can see with many young people today, especially in Montego Bay, um, we all know of the scamming in Jamaica. A right, lot right. of them, they want the short term. I actually, had, I actually had an assistant who died. I didn't even know that he died. He, I used to encourage him because he was, he was very poor. He came from a community called Montpelier in Jamaica, Montego Bay. And I used to encourage him. I said, man, go to school. And he'd say to me, man, it takes too long. I said, listen, I've been going to school for 28 years. And there are some people who are ahead of me. And as hard as it is, I have to go on because guess what? I know when I get where I am or what I have, I know how I got it. And I have the sense of appreciation. Yeah. And I kept talking to him, talking to him, but unfortunately, I left because I came to the Bahamas to do special education here. And in leaving, 
um, basically, I would have been a mentor to him because we all need mentors. When Once you have right. exhausted all your resources, you need to turn to a mentor. When I left um, and returned on vacation to Jamaica a year later, I found out that he had been killed. And um, he was the only, it, it hurt me because mm -hmm. I remember he was doing so well when I was encouraging him. And, you know, he would listen to my stories because, believe me, when we talk about education, I can tell you how education can help and change. As much as you said, I may come from affluence. No, because <laughs> not at all. Not at but all. Um, <laughs> when, yeah. when, when, I, when I see where he was going, but the fact that I left, he didn't have that stability of person in his ear to keep going. He just went the quick way and ended up losing his life. So as, as far as I was aware, his grandmother was left to fend for herself because he was the only one that was yes. taking care of his grandmother. So yes. you have to look at it that, you know, we have, to, we have to teach that values are important. We have to value ourselves. If you don't value yourself, you know what you are? You're a statistic. We are wow. all statistic. Larry, Sharifa, Shanoi, we are all TRN number whatever, social security whatever. But if you value yourself, you're Shano, you're Sharif, or you're Larry. Right. And nobody can take that from you. So that is the most important thing that we have to teach um, children and adults. There's nothing else as much as we have made other points. I think just having self-worth and value of yourself right is right. the most important thing yes yeah no I, I i honestly i do appreciate it and i did not know you were gonna come um with such a moving story at the end um it really moves me but actually while you were talking i start to think about life and that um in the process of pursuing education i started to think back and there are few batchmates who did not graduate why because they actually die before and um they die from terminal illness um, those that I know of that were in, in my batch, they were just sick and they die. Um, so I, we can't be so focused on finishing the process that during we, we, we just partially sit, wait, we're not contributing. Um, because at every point in the educational journey, the Lord wants you to be successful. He wants you to produce within um, your call. Um, let me... Let me pull something from our viewers and uh, whoever like to take a bite of it, at it, you can, um, you know, jump ahead, uh, you know, jump at it. Um, that's CWD company. And the question is, um, can we say that most black people have a, an educational problem and not a racism issue? Um, for the lack of upward mobility. All right. Um, interesting question, Larry. <laughs> I think I'll Very take brave. it. Very <laughs> uh, Because, well, I think as I'd mentioned prior that I also studied intercultural communications and international development. And at the root of that, it's really how we relate to different cultural nuances and how they're affecting how we interact with other people. So the question, I, I mean, it's not as clear cut to say that most black people have an educational problem and not a racism issue for their lack of upward mobility. Mm -hmm. I think you'd have to think of the many different components. So for example, has race prevented some black people from accessing educational institutions or educational mm -hmm. opportunities? And we can agree that in many instances that would have happened prior. If we look back at some of our parents' generations and spaces yeah. that they may or may not have been able to occupy. So. So we could look at it to say that had been or that has been the case in some instances. If I look at my own situation, for example, I grew up in Jamaica, as I said, education and scholarships were a tool out for me. And I've yeah. often said that many people, they aren't dull. They're not people who, uh, you know, you know, people would say you're dull or you're, you're not very literate or stuff. There are many people who aren't like that. They just don't have the opportunities. Right. And so when we look at a question such as this, we have to look at is racism creating an issue of access for some people or even if it opens up the doors and there is access 
is it preventing some persons from advancing in different positions? And I know this would have been a big thing that came up as well. When you look at organizations, the top Fortune 500 companies, for example, who are the leaders in these organizations, if black persons are occupying certain roles within these organizations, are they on the boards? Are they in managerial positions or are they in positions that are not at the top? So I wouldn't want it to be said that it's as clear cut as that. Secondly, as well, though, I do think this part of the question about the lack of education. So going back to our definition of education as give and take, learning and exchanging knowledge, and importantly, what, what um, Sharifa said about education, not just being what you learn in the classroom or actually what you should learn in the classroom. You should be learning financial literacy. You should be learning social graces. You should be learning life skills, how to interact with and relate to human beings. Yes. I learned lots of these cultural differences and how to interact with people from other cultures, races, etc. at the master's level. But I'm a firm believer that these are things that should be taught from the very basic level, respect for differences, respect for human beings and all of that stuff. So to answer CWD's question, I could not take a stance to say most black people have an educational problem and not a racism issue, because I do think sometimes racism factors into the educational sector. It affects opportunities. It affects spaces for social mobility. You look at the statistics, uh, people who have, say, the same as in terms of the same bachelor's yeah. degree level, for example, and they're yeah. all placed within the same organization. But yeah. because racism persists, somebody right. who has all that appears to be equal footing in terms of educational level they're not in a senior role versus someone right. else if racism comes into play. So yeah. CWD and company, I think it's a mix of both, that racism mm -hmm. where it is not addressed, where it yeah. becomes a factor in organization and educational institutions, it can in fact affect black persons and their lack of mobile um, upward mobility. If mm -hmm. you have a lecturer, for example, who is racially motivated and you could have bright like bulb you could be bright <laughs> no, till the morning, but if the person only you're sees what you're your skin, you're going to have a challenge. They're going to fail you, yeah. and opportunities that were really meant to you be yours will be clouded yeah. simply on the basis of race. Right, right. So rather interesting question, but just not yeah. very clear cut because it can, in fact, be affected by both the failure to, equip, to acquire knowledge, especially financial knowledge or yeah. financial management knowledge, but it can also be affected based on if race holds you back, even as yes. bright or, you know, or, or as brilliant as you are. Yes, I, I, I like your, your your way of addressing that, Shanoi. And I, I, I think it spins off to something that we have in our discussional points, uh, because it has been said that poverty and education are in, inextricably linked. Uh, how does how does one who is in such a, a challenging circumstance um, escape um, from that? Um, yeah. Uh, Hutchinson, start off. Yes, and then, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, it's it's interesting because I, I was reading an article about, let's say, five weeks ago on the exact thing because I was looking at... Um, too hard today. <laughs> Go the, ahead. Article, the article was addressing um, is it that the lack of education causes poverty and you know I'm, a, I'm someone who likes to look at history to compare it to today okay uh -huh. and okay. when I, 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 tend, I tend to look at especially African countries I like to look at African countries about where they like to speak about poverty and their access to education and I like to look at the same examples for people in Western countries, poverty and education. But they are not, um, you, can, you can get out of it. Poverty and education are not necessarily linked, intertwined, because you can get out of it. Because let me give you an example. Um, I have had students from, I think I can only use Sher Sharifa. I can only use her because she went to Montego Bay High, so she would probably be aware of this place I'm about to call. And by the way, Sharifa, my cousin is actually the principal of your school. Anyhow. Mr. Powell. Cool. Mr. Powell, yes, that's my cousin. No, um, <laughs> there's a, there, there are, there, I had students from a community called Railway Lane. 
when you're talking about poverty, that's poverty, all right? Now, they only have access to government education, let's put it that way, public schooling. Well, yeah. Now, the, the thing to say is, and what a lot of people like to say is, boy, I don't have the money to go to college. My folks are this, my folks are that. We'll never, I'll never get anywhere. But let me tell you, there are opportunities for vocational training because everybody thinks about college. A lot of people tend to overlook things such as vocational training or specialized training. Um, when, um, for example, with me, when I have girls who are, who are unable to, let us say, do it academically. So I pair them with, let us say, a hairdresser or a seamstress. Right now, I have many colleagues who have had the education, who were poor too, who are making, and I should even include myself, making way less than some of them. Yeah. Because we tend, we tend to look at, at education as the academic aspect and that, okay, if, right. if I'm not gonna get the academic part of it, I'm gonna forever be poor. But if we, if, 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 if um, those in poverty, so to speak, are able to get into such things such as volunteerism, internship, a lot of quote unquote poor people who we like to call ghetto people or hood people, they are they have very good personalities. They're very flamboyant. Yeah. Those people are well rounded. That they can use to get themselves out of many, many of their difficult situations. If they go and speak to, let us say, present themselves, just like how flamboyant they are in their mm -hmm. communities, they will do well. But it is this mindset that because I am poor, I can't go to UWE, I can't go to UTE, I'll not be able to achieve anything. Oh, I finished high school, so guess what? I, I know just have to go work at McDonald's, call center, stuff like that. No, 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 no. Mm -mm. You, you can go and get some form of vocational training. There are many, there are many programs that are there that offer internship. You know, but yeah. culture. When, earlier when we were talking about um, about when the gentleman was talking about the educational opportunities and racism. I was thinking about it that people people tend not to people we tend to make too many excuses. Mm -hmm. If we really want something, it's we're going to go for it. Right, right. All right. Right. If we really want it, we're going to go for it. And a lot of us have many talents that are not that are not re related to the academic aspect, but a lot of us have skills and very good skills. A lot of men excellent carpenters, excellent mechanics, they don't necessarily need to go to school for that. But nobody wants to take the time to go through the process. Because remember, as, as Sharifa said, education, it's all a journey, you know. Right. It's a journey. Many of us just think, OK. And I think some of us, once we, for those of us who went to college or university, once we graduated, we thought, OK, world, here I am, Finish. big money time. Didn't not not so realizing that life isn't like that. Not so so. It, it's not, it's not, it, it is linked, you know, but it's not inextricably linked as people will think. Yeah. All right. Because as I said, there are opportunities and ways to get out of it. Internships, volunteering, going for vocational training. And it does not have to be in a formal setting. It can be informal. All yeah. right. Let me allow the ladies to speak. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, I 100% agree with you, Colin. I absolutely love that. Um, I've always said, you know, when I was teaching as an assistant professor at the university level, I had a friend who is a contractor and his painters and tilers and carpenters were making a lot more money than I was. And yeah. so um, I definitely good. think I wish sometimes that I had one of those skills because I could be making a lot oh, more yes. money. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, 
with regards to the question though, I wanna say that I can in some sense agree with the statement that education and poverty are links, but the type of education that I'm thinking about is not our traditional type of education. I go to high school, I graduate, go to college, get a couple of degrees, right. I start working, sit in that job for the rest of my life, think I'm, maybe I'm going to get rich or just live yeah. comfortably enough or whatever it is. Not that type of education, but the type of education that changes your mindset. And it goes right in with, with what Colin is saying. It changes your mindset, your perspective, and your approach to life and all that it throws at you. Right, right. So instead of sitting there and saying, I'm poor, I don't have any money, I don't want anybody to support me, I can't do anything, or I'm not bright, I can't read, or whatever it is. As Colin said, sometimes we make up all of these different types of excuses because we just don't want to push ourselves. And that's the same thing with a lot of the scammers in, Jam in Montego Bay, Jamaica. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to work. I know I've seen so many situations where there are people who are like, oh, can you give me some money? I don't have a job or whatever. But if you say, oh, hey, can you come and cut my yard? I'll pay you some money. No, no, no. You're talking to the wrong person. <laughs> Nobody wants to work. And, and I've heard people say some of the times, oh, I want to be this. Or I want to be that because right. it's easy. There is no path that you're going to take that is easy. If that you want to be easy. great at anything, it is going to be difficult. Sure. Anything you're going to be great at is going to take a lot of work. And there will be things that we that will be thrown at you from all angles. And you have to have the mindset to know how to deal with these things. And it doesn't matter if you have a lot of money or if you have a little bit of money. So if you're rich financially or you're poor financially, there, there are two different types of poverty. There's a right. poverty of the mindset and there's a poverty of finances. The type of poverty that we're going to link with education is the poverty of the mindset. Mm -hmm. So if you have all the money in the world, but your mindset doesn't want to get you to push you to go for the things that are going to make you greater than you are today. It's mm -hmm. really, it's really pointless. You know what I'm saying? Um, so hard times are bound to happen to you, whether you're rich or you're poor financially. And if you have that mindset, that perspective of how you're going to approach this particular circumstance, when I find myself in it, not if, but when, then that's how you're going to get through these difficult situations in your life. And I'll like to use another example from my life. When I came to Loma Linda for the first time to do my PhD, I went back home to my community and I was kind of shocked because I looked around me and everybody was kind of in the same place. There was no progression or growth. Like right, right. it shocked me to my core because I'd been in a place where everybody around me was progressing and growing and doing all manner of things. And I go back home and everybody's kind of in the same place. And it blew my mind, but I was there for maybe about two months. I was just home and I wasn't really doing much because I was transitioning to doing something else and I was resting. And it occurred to me that it is so easy to just stay in that same place. Become complacent, yes. It is so easy because you know what? When you're in that community, we're in that position, all you can see around you are people who are not doing anything or people who are doing things that are not with in line with your integrity or values in order to make money or having somebody else support them. That's all you can see. And if you can't see beyond that, you won't know that you can go beyond that. Mm -hmm. And so that's why sometimes we have these programs for students where we bring in people from the outside to teach them, you can achieve more than what you can see. Because yes. most often than not, we can only go as far as we can see. And so that's why it's important also to read. When you read, you expand your mind into worlds that you never thought you could go into yes. and you're like, Oh, wow, I can do that too, even though yeah. I've never seen anybody around me do it. <laughs> or, you know, they encourage young people when you're in your 20s, go outside of your community, live somewhere else for a number of years, travel oh the world, see different cultures, learn yeah. another language, whatever it is, learn something else outside of what you've always seen around you and always grown up with. It changes your whole perspective. It changes your whole life. And that yeah. I'm really grateful for that. When I was in my early 20s, I had the experience of being outside of my immediate community and seeing things beyond what was immediately around me and know that I can go much further than what I'd ever even imagined. Yes. No, no. Um, profound, profound, profound. And um, as I listened to um, um, Colin and I'm um, sure if I just know, you actually answer a, a question um, that a viewer had. Um, um, that's Natasha. Um, not that asking you if you, you taught her, um, Colin, but um, this one, she said, um, what is your advice to individuals who have so much potential. Yes, all right, thank you so much. They have so much potential. Um, they are not dull, yet they find it so difficult to get scholarship opportunities. Um, so um, it hinders them from going forward. I believe what you have shared, it actually um, begin to answer um, those things. And 
I am going to move to our next question, um, though, but let me just contribute to um, some stuff to Natasha. There are opportunities all around you. And, and you, you, you just got to open your eyes mm -hmm. and look for them. And one of the things that I've learned growing up is that when one door is closed, 10 more is going to open. Um, so you just got to go to the next door and knock. Um, and, 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 and you will see the vast array of opportunities that are out there. Um, I, I, you know, you're here, um, our scholars here talking about scholarships, but I receive a few scholarships, yes, but um, there was something that I did on my way uh, um, going through school that it sweat the green out of me. I'm Larry Green, right? Um, but I'm telling you, at the end of the day, it pays off and it builds me. That's something that's called culporting. I went around, traveled the world, sell books. And, and you know, so so that's through the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And if you're out there and you'd like to know, just find your, your nearest Seventh-day Adventist Church and ask about it. Um, just how opportunities come, you just got to open your eyes and you got to look for them. So on the other side of the break, right, um, I'm going to end, ask Shanoi um, for you to um, relate to the discussion point. Um, because an individual failed to complete high school, does that prevent them from getting into college um, to change their social standing? Um, we, have, we have looked at uh, a few universities. Um, I've gone, by the way, I've touched all of these universities um, some way or the other. Um, I've been to Loma Linda just to do a cohort. Um, it was good to be on campus, um, Sharifa. Um, I'm an alumnus, um, uh, alumni from uh, Universidad de las Antillas, that's in Puerto Rico. So you can yeah. check that out. Please go there. You don't have to know a bit of Spanish, but when you get there, you learn how to know yeah. Spanish. Yeah. <laughs> All yeah. right. And so, so challenge yourself. And, and this one yes. um, was where I went to first. It's Northern Caribbean University. Um, so check out Northern Caribbean University. And this is where I am also at now at Andrews University. So check out these two schools and the option is yours. Great. Discover your destiny at NCU, champions of the annual national business model competition since its inception. Gain valuable work experience. Move yourself up the employment ladder. Boost your confidence to start your own business. Visit apply.ncu.edu.jm for the upcoming semester for the best values-based education in Jamaica today. NCU, owned and operated by the Seventh-day Adventist Church in Jamaica, Bahamas, Cayman, and the Turks and Caicos Islands. Call 963-7157 or 963-7254. Vous pensez aux études supérieures? Charles, je suis en main. Estás pensando en estudiar un postgrado? Thinking about grad school? Thinking about grad school? Thinking about grad school? Thank you so much. Um, so choose, choose. Um, so engage us right here. <coughs> engage us right here, Jean. I guess I guess I preach too hard today. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Um, so very good question, Larry. And one of the things I left out from my introduction is that here in Jamaica, I also have a, mo a network called Jamaican Mommies Network. And as a mom, I started that the minute my daughter was born, it has blossomed into so much more. But a key thing is that all the time we have single parents, moms who have come on into their network, they're feeling down and out, you know, they haven't had the means, they haven't had the educational opportunities. But what is also excellent about this network is that we also have moms who have been sharing their stories, who tell you, right. at, at the time I was 18, I had two kids. You know, we have mothers who said at 18 years old, I had two kids, I couldn't see my way out. My family kind of gave up on me. There were no opportunities for me to see how I was going to secure things for myself financially. And so one of the stories the lady recounts, so she always says she's going to move on to become a chief executive officer or a chief financial officer. And people would say to her, oh, how oh, in a, your circumstance? 
And I want to touch back on something that Sharifa mentioned. It's about mindset, mindset shifting. Yeah. It is something I practice heavily. I believe, as I said, we're here for a purpose. I believe we have been given all the tools to achieve that purpose. I believe that once you believe that, that you can achieve it. And so you've heard countless people over time who have shared their story to say, people write me off. You know, people say, I mean, I come out to nothing. People tell us, you y'all got dead before you read certain time. And then there are these people sharing their stories of success. So the inability to complete high school or getting pregnant in high school, are people telling you, say, you got a gunman? Are people telling you, say, you're not going to live this to certain things? These should never be what are used to determine what your story is going to be. My right. favorite thing is to say your words do not define my destiny, right? So for anybody who is watching this, I want you to adopt that. Say it to yourself every single day as a mindset shifting tool that the words of others, my current circumstances does not define my destiny, right? Because I've seen it time again where people have not been in the position where they needed to be. Something else I wanted to say on this topic as well is about timelines. Society teaches us to think of, you know, we need to have certain things by a certain time. Oh, by the time you reach 16, you need to be finished here. By the time you reach 18, you need to be married by this age. You need to have your house by this age. You need to have your car, etc. Guys, we are all unique. We all have very right. unique journeys. We right. all have very different milestones. Yeah. And let me give you an example. My mom, my mother is my ultimate role model because my mother went back to university when I was going back to university, we didn't know how it was going to work out, but you know, the money was tight and everything. And my mother was a teacher for a while and she wanted to go back to get qualifications. And my mother went back to school. When I went back to school, she was in classes with people who were significantly younger, but at the end of the day, she was graduating with them. Mm -hmm. And so I will say to people just, Sometimes you have to throw off the timeline. Sure, you right. can set ideal goals for your life and say you need to achieve things by a certain time. But think of your journey. Think of your destination. Think of the accomplishment that you're going to have. And if you're there in high school and you never finish, it just means that you may right. take a slightly different path. I won't even say right. a longer time because, listen, I think things happen right. on our timeline. I really believe if you take a very divine approach that you arrive at your destination when you're intended to and when you are prepared to be there and yeah. in my own case achieving scholarship for example i had applied before i never got through and looking back now and seeing what i know now i knew that the time when i applied for the scholarship first it was not my time sure. i was not prepared to embrace the opportunities that really came with the scholarship and so when i got it years later that was my time so simply, if you're not where you are in terms of high school, if you're not where you are in terms of your life, reevaluate, yes, but also start to think, you know, it's not the end of the world. It is not something to be written off. There were people at six years old, they couldn't spell their name. You know, there were people who were told that they will not be able to read. They would right. not be able to advance certain things. They now have a PhD, etc. Right. So I would say... Do not let that be, you know, your precursor. You may not even have the positive role models in your own family. You may not have them in people who are around you. But sometimes use the internet to your advantage. There are countless speakers out there who are always driving the motivation about self-belief, about changing your mindset, about really thinking that anything that you want to achieve and it is for you, you will receive it on the time that it was intended for you to receive it. Yes. That, that's powerful, you know, and a lot of persons give up because of um, their story, but your story is big. Mm -hmm. And um, what I have come to acknowledge is that I'll prefer to, well, I'll, I've met, it might be a little biased, right? I prefer to read a story that um, where it starts out, I did not complete high school, but, right? <laughs> you know, um, so you're setting up, or the Lord might set you up for a big comeback, you know, a nice book, something great. Um, so you have to use that as a catalyst to get to where God wants you to, to, to get. Does anyone have a contribution? Go ahead. Go ahead, Sharif. Yeah, I'd like to add, you know, Shanoi, I feel like you took the words right out of my mouth. That's exactly what I wanted to say. Is that one, it's never too late. 
you could be 50 and still be doing the things that you want to do or starting to do the things that you want to do nobody's else's timeline is your own two is that no two paths are the same we all take different paths and then three is that no experience is wasted like Shanoi, i have or Shanoi's mother i have a different experience of going to school and most people go to medical school when they're like 20, 22. Um, I'm 30. I started just last year in med school. Most of my classmates are 22, 23 years old. But I don't feel out of place. And I don't feel like this is the wrong time for me to do it. I wanted to start from long ago, from since I finished high school. But I think also like you, that this is the perfect time for me to have begun medical school. I think now I'm in a much better place mentally and right. emotionally and all the ways that I need to be successful in medical school. Now is the perfect time, I think, for me to be here. And as you said, Larry, that I think God gives us these stories so that we can share them with others so that they too can know that even yeah. if your story is not the same as everyone else around you, you can make it to the point that you want to get to. And I believe as I've lived over these years in my life and going through all of these different paths, that our purpose is found in our path. All the things that have pulled you back that you feel like you failed at or you're struggling through, that's where your purpose is. Those are the things that you're going to use, that story of how you overcame. That's You're going to use that to help you to inspire the next generation, to inspire those who are coming after you. And there's so many options, so many paths to take. But I think that the path that you are on, even if you think that, oh, man, I wish I had done this sooner or whatever, but the things that you learn along the way, you yeah. at the end of it all, I think it's just so beautiful how you see it all come together and you're like, wow, what a beautiful life, a beautiful path, a beautiful journey that we've carved out, carved out that God has carved out for me. You know, I read uh, Michelle Obama's book and she wrote, you know, like, I guess people sometimes will say, oh, you're so extraordinary, you're doing a PhD, you're doing this, or you're the president's wife or whatever. But she's like, I'm just an ordinary girl on, on an extraordinary journey. And I think we're all those kinds of people. We're just on this kind of extraordinary journey. We just have to think about how all of those little pieces come into place to help us to, to live out our purpose and to be who we're called to be. And I think it's just such a beautiful uh, thing to view and see and look at. They say vision is, uh, hindsight is twenty twenty. So when yeah. you look at all these things and see how God really has led you to this point, it really is very beautiful. And to add to um, Natisha's comments, like, you know, people who can get scholarships and so forth. Mm -hmm. Again, as it relates to my own story in med school now, I'm working. I work at the dorm as a desk clerk. And I also am a student dean on the dorm. And in my first semester, I was also teaching online at Northern Caribbean University, which is kind of crazy because, as I said, med, med school is a lot. But most students in my class don't have to work because, one, either both their parents are doctors and so they have the money to send them to school and give them food and pay for their rent and so forth, or yeah. uh, they can get federal loans and so they have that kind of money to take them through. Um, I don't have access to that and I don't have my parents sending me money to take me through. And so I have to make sure that I work. And it's something I was talking about with one of my classmates. Or I'll send them some money too, right? <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> when he was in undergrad, he's from Ghana and he um, came over here on a, um, to become a US citizen, but he had to be working two jobs while going to school full time. And like most people won't be doing that because school itself is a lot of work. Um, but he also had to be sending money back home to his family. But he knew that's what he needed to do to get to where he needs right. to go. And so even if you don't have certain opportunities that you might think other people have or you're like, oh, you know, sometimes we like to think that the grass is green on the other side, but it isn't. It's, it's greener where you water it. So you have to put in the work that is needed. So if you have to work while you're in school, you know, learn to manage your time, do what you have to do to get right. ahead. We don't all have the same opportunities, but we can all um, accomplish the things that we desire. Yes, oh, man, time time has run out, right? Yes. But this part, I'm not going to rush, right? Because I want to hear, and I know the viewers want to hear. Um, I, I could start with Colin that I misjudge. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I was, you know, I was gonna jump in my car after this to go up to him to ask him to, you know, you know, give me some of his money and stuff, you know. From, but tell us about your journey, um, Colin. Um, what's your story? I realized my mic was muted. 
I think I'll, I'll not share only my story. I'll share the story of myself and my sisters. I'm an only boy, three sisters. And um, education is all we had. That's all my parents had to give to us. Um, from the days of seeing my mom as a teacher, um, I don't know how many of you are old enough to remember the days when um, teachers were paid. Well, we actually still are paid peanuts, but I meant liter literal peanuts. I remember, I remember my mother, um, well, my father was an immigration officer. My mother, as I said, was a teacher. And I saw my father, despite working as an immigration officer, having to do things on the side to sell, send us to school. Nothing illegal. I'm talking like buying and selling stuff. My mother, you know, teachers back in those days, the book and the pencil and stuff like that. And I remember mommy would always tell us, um, it's not like today. Um, we'd get treats at the end of every month when she got paid, but the treats were relegated to what's called duplex biscuits or cheese tricks, stuff like that. <laughs> and I remember them telling us, look, all we have to give you is education because we, we never had a house. Um, as I recall, as a young man growing up, um, up to age 13, sometimes my sister say, oh, you make it a big deal, but it actually, it, it had an impact on me. We moved eight times from when I was a child to 13. I recall us moving eight times, rent house to rent house. And as I said, my folks said to us, education is all we have to give you. And seeing it, um, my sisters, especially one of them, my, my eldest sister, she had to do it on her own because my father couldn't find the money to basically support her and my middle sister, so to speak, the one before me, because she wanted to go to law school. And, you know, to go to law school, teacher, immigration officer, in Jamaica, you're nobody, mm -hmm. right? You're not, you're just middle class, just barely making middle class. And with, with education, it's taken them and me from where where we would be relying on on how much money mommy would make from pencils and books to where we can take care of mommy now because me personally i boy it's so much to say i if you see my face i'm kind of thinking everything's running through my mind let me let me just say this to the audience let me tell you something rome wasn't built in a day it wasn't built in a day and things are gonna take time it's going to take a long time because to go to achieve your dreams when you see your friends making it and you're not making it, you cannot watch that because everybody's season is different. What you are to be doing is when you're laying the blocks and the groundwork, make sure that you're laying your foundation solid. And education, if you fall in doing education, if you fail, for example, I'll, I'll relate this quickly. When I left Herbert Morrison, I was, I sat back in those days, this is back in 1992, I sat six AXE subjects. I only got three. Why did I get three? Because at the time, BWI was who would have delivered the subjects back to Jamaica from Barbados. I was informed that they lost some of us, our results in a warehouse in Barbados and they can't help us, That's we're on our own. So my five years of high school would have been down the drain. Only three subjects, all right? And as I said, as a boy, you know, that's a recipe for disaster. Right. I, I didn't give up. I went to evening school, which I didn't wanna do because I didn't think I should have been going to evening institute because I was a prefect at high school. I, I would have been head boy, but I was too young. And I made my way back ended up going to cast when i was at cast got into problem with a lecturer who felt that he was god almighty himself got got booted out of cast didn't get to get my diploma in engineering wow mother said you know what no you're not gonna be worthless you're gonna go to teacher's college i'm like i don't want to be a teacher i went to teacher's college hated it because this wasn't for me anyway teacher's college for me was a breeze 
was going to graduate um, joint valedictorian with a good friend of mine who is now the principal at Woolmer's Boys School. So if he's if he's watching this, kudos to you. But my very last subject, which had nothing to do with anything, um, the incorrect exam was sent and we were told don't sit the exam it's incorrect just sign and go when the results came i failed all my three years in teaching because of that one which had nothing to do with it. so again i fell on my face and it seemed like life when when i got i started to work as a preacher and teacher under pressure every day but i said i'm not gonna give up because education had gotten me so close and my own determination and what I remember mommy saying, that's all that they had to give us. Went again, went to university. I tried, applied, did not get in. But for some reason, a lecturer believed in me and took me in. I went to Western Carolina University in the States. Don't ask me how I paid the school fee. Many days fridge empties, only water. My fridge was like a coconut, white, white on the inside, I just water, nothing else. But anyway, go right through and guess what at the end of the day i graduated top of the class summa cum laude and 4.0 average yes. and here i am education did that and let me just i like to add my sister the one before me for someone who was asking about scholarships as i said we were nobody but my sister she wanted to be an attorney she started by helping, volunteering at the clerk at the courts in Montego Bay as a clerk of court. She worked her way up, worked her way up, keep working, doing free work for attorneys. Do you know where she is now? And if you don't want, if you don't believe me, you can go Google. My sister's a Supreme Court judge in Jamaica, Trisha Hutchinson. All right? We got nothing except education. I could tell you my other sister's story, but I'm telling you, the journey... When everybody tells you no and every door is closed in your face, trust me, don't give up. Home wasn't built in a day. It was not built in a day. All right? That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. I take back my words. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so inspiring. Um, go ahead, Sharif, and share with us um, your story. Wow, uh, Colin, what a story. I am inspired myself. I am just so amazed at your story and I really admire you for pushing through all of that. Um, you know, as someone mentioned in the chat, a lot of people would just give up. And sometimes I think about that. I've seen even currently, a lot of the times we have students who fail first or second year med school and have to go back right to the beginning. And sometimes I think, wow, would I be willing to start over again for this dream that I've had all my life? It is so tough when you feel like you've been either rejected or you've been pushed down flat on your yeah, face. Right. How do I get up from that place and continue on this journey? Or is this a redirection? Sometimes it can be so tough. Is God sending me somewhere else? Or is this not what I'm supposed to do? It can be really tough. But, you know, last night we were in Vespers and the chaplain, she said, don't think that if you're breezing through school, that means you're going to have it just easy. Your trial is either going to come while you're in school or when you're done. So it's going to come at some point. Yes. <laughs> so, but anyway, as for my story, I also grew up similar to Colin. I grew up in Montego Bay, um, St. James. I grew up in rural um, parts of St. James. And when I was growing up, um, we did have a house, but we didn't have any running water. And so we didn't really have a functional um, bathroom and toilet. And so we used to just go to the river to like bathe, wash our clothes, wash the plates, all kinds of stuff. Um, and we had what we call a pit latrine uh, that was shared with like my grand, great grandmother and so forth. And so, but when we were growing up, like none of that really seemed that significant at the time. Um, and the thing that I think that kind of helped to kind of stave off some of those thoughts is that we always had food <laughs> for some reason. There was, I guess, part of it is that we grew up in the country. And so there was always something on the trees. There was breadfruit growing outside. There was a, there's an acu tree to this day right outside. Um, and, you know, there were lots of mangoes. So during mango season, it's mango for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, um, <laughs> and those kind of things. So we always had food, so that was never really an issue. And just like you, my mother made sure that she sent all of us to school. She had five of us, and all of us, we went to school every day. We never missed school, going all the way from kindergarten all the way up into high school. She made sure that she sent all of us to school. Now, she didn't have money to send us to college, but because she had instilled in us the value of 
put in that kind of education forefront and going all the way up through high school. Um, you know, most of us, we did really well in high school and um, I had the opportunity to move on and go to college. Um, and and that was because of where I was going to church. And uh, I had a church family who was like, you know, they wanted to help and push me forward. And my pastor, as I said, he took me to, to NCU um, and the vice president at the time, Dr. Fider, he interviewed both me and Natisha, who's in the chat, and we both got a scholarship. And that's really, I mean, maybe God might have provided another way, but that's the way that we got to go through college. Um, and when I finished my PhD at Loma Linda, actually before I got to Loma Linda, because I, as I said, medicine has been a li lifelong dream. And so even when I was at NCU, I was planning that I would just go immediately to medicine right as soon as I was finished my, with my bachelor's degree. Didn't work out that way. Um, I did get into UWE Med when I was done, but I also got into Loma Linda to do the PhD at the same time. And I opted to come here. And that was only because, again, of the support of people in my life, which that's a whole other story. But um, God has always provided so many things that I need while I'm here. And when I finished and I went back to Jamaica to teach, that wasn't also, again, that wasn't my plan. I had planned to do mission service in Africa for a year, which fell through at the last minute and I ended up teaching. But those three years of teaching at NCU, I think God definitely divinely put that into my path. Right. Um, I learned so much during that experience as a teacher, interacting with the students. Um, it was just such a profound learning experience for me. And it really cemented some of the things that need to be a part of my journey and what I'm supposed to do as a physician and just as a person in this life, how I'm supposed to impact the next generation after me. So I'm really grateful for that experience and how it has tied into um, what I will be doing for the rest of my life. And um, grow as a student who didn't have a lot of tuition growing up, when I was at NCU, I took the opportunity, as many students as I could help with a few thousand dollars here and there um, with their tuition. That was, I think, part of why God placed me there so I can help students. And um, as much as I can for the rest of my life, if there are students or whoever I can help um, with their tuition or whatever food or whatever it is they need in school, like I think that God has placed that on me from my experience as a student to be able to give back and help those students. Um, and one of my mentors who was also very helpful with um, with everything that I've done in my life. You know, one time I was like, how can I pay you back for all you've done? And he's like, you know, the, the only thing that he wants is for me to help somebody else. Wow. And so, you know, the thing is each one reach one. So he yeah. reached out to me, he helped me. And now it is my task, it is my calling, it is my duty to reach out and help someone else. So as much as I can, I want to help people. And um, I'm doing that as, right now the finances is kind of hard for me to help people financially however um as much as i can i will and um apart from that as i mentioned i do have my website that is going across the screen right now uh dr reef on the go.com i share blog posts about different experiences what i've learned from them how i've been inspired how god has led me along the different journeys and how i want people to be inspired to also discover um, the path or the story that God is writing for them, as well as my Instagram page that I share similar stories, Dr. Reef on the Go. Um, you can feel free to join along the journey. Um, and I hope that you also will be inspired. And um, yeah, so right now I'm in med school. I'm very excited about the journey. I'm in my second year and it's a four year program and I'm excited for all the things that God will use me to do as a vision. I've been so excited just to be able to work with people in different situations. Um, in medicine, there are a lot of disparities. Um, there's a lot of racism, and I didn't touch on the question earlier, but that's the whole thing that we could spend a long time discussing. Um, but there are a lot of disparities in medicine, and I want to be able to help to bridge some of those gaps, not just in America, but in my home island, Jamaica, uh, because I think there's a lot of need for um, people to have greater access to healthcare and education. And so um, that, I think, is a big part of who, what I'm supposed to do with my life, is to help uh, individuals to gain greater access to healthcare and also something that uh, Shanoi mentioned earlier is um, lifestyle medicine, kind of like what do you do to, first of all, prevent some of the diseases that we can prevent, like the diabetes and the hypertension and the high cholesterol. There are lots of things that we can do. And so um, as a teacher, as my experience in teaching and combined with my experience as a physician, I want to be able to help others educate them in um, how we can use our lifestyle to live our most productive or most blessed and best lives. You're muted, Larry. Yeah, th <laughs> thanks, Sheriff. You're, you're, it's inspirational. It's inspirational, your story. And um, uh, as you talk about the outside toilet, there's a lot 
they say latrine right or pit toilet that's what you say right um right. you know it, it's it, it's awesome and um and and for those who don't know if you if you use those kind of toilets um you know tissues that we use that that's luxury also <laughs> <laughs> in those uh situation um so you, you find other means um whether it's bush or newspaper and you make sure you wet and so forth just to make sure it used properly wrap your mind around that um and to it does not matter where you're coming from god has a special path for you um so thanks for that it's very inspirational um so shanoi um let me hear a little bit of your story Okay, I mean, I, I'm listening to the two other speakers and there's so many um, connections, so many ways in which things right. are intertwined. As I would have mentioned or established early in that I also grew up as a part of my life in rural Jamaica. And I'm from a big family, in fact. I mean, <laughs> for a long time, people thought I was from a small family, but it's because my household was always so populated with siblings, neighbors, kids. My mother was a teacher, so she's like the community mother. So I'd have so many people around and my way of escaping was through books. So when my house was packed to the brim and there was noise all around and I needed to study, I would just dive my head in my books. Right. And right. you know, my story is so much intertwined with my mother in particular. And I wanted to make a point about the necessity of having positive influences around you. Now, my father grew up at a point, his father died at a very young age. So, you know, he kind of had to grow up a lot faster, etc. So he didn't necessarily have access to the kind and quality of education I had. But what I will say is that once we got home from school, it was routine. You had to take out your book. You had to show what you had learned and you had to show anything you got wrong. You had to correct it. And so even though he may not have personally had all the tools to kind of teach us some of those things, he equipped us with the standard, you know, routine of ensuring that we were correcting, we were actively learning. As it relates to my mother now, I'm telling you, my mother, every time I share my story, I'm saying that if I had a different mother, my journey may have been very different. Because when I finish high school, I told my mother, I'm going to take a break. And she asked me to do what? And we never had a conversation about it. But all I knew is that my uniform was made and I was registered for six form. And when I look at it, and you know, my mother said, no, daughter of hers going to sit down and get pregnant on her, etc." and she just sent me on to school. It was not a discussion. And I look at every stage of my life, you know, when I moved on and I got the scholarship to go to the UK, I was worried, I'm a mother, I don't want to go. I had started my business, I have clients, and I made all the excuses in the world. And my mother said to me, you have spoken about going back to school for ages. And she said, if this opportunity passes, you're going to regret it for the rest of your life. So my mother has always been that sobering, source in my life to kind of say you know stop self-doubting and right. when i looked at it the one year flew off in the uk many challenges would have been faced along the way when i was doing my right. masters that stole my laptop like literally my the university featured me as an international student you know they were sharing my journey etc the same day my my story appeared on the website my laptop went missing now, if you're a master's level student and you understand you're busy researching, you're busy writing, that your laptop is your life. That's where all your research is. It's like you're starting over from scratch. But what that did is that it gave me an extra dose of motivation. I said, no, I'm not leaving Jamaica to come here for less than what I came here for. And I'm going to leave with a distinction because that is what I came here for. And so even though I had a major setback, I redoubled my efforts and it's like I got a focus. I literally wrote down the exact grades I wanted for that term. And every paper I sat, I'm telling you, mark my word here. Like if I say I'm getting 80 on this paper, I got the 80 on this paper. So I want people to understand how you can really chronicle your own path, how you can set intentions for yourself and really achieve them. You know, write it down, write down your goal. It may be big, it may be scary, it may be infuriating. You may not have the circumstances. And so in my case, when I speak about my mother, I have to talk about my siblings as well. I was fortunate to be one of the younger ones. My brothers were older and for them, my brother, you know, sometimes he speaks to me and it's a little painstaking because he said he did not see college or university as an option for him. 
because at the time my parents were nowhere near a position and again influences he didn't have people around him who were saying at the time okay take the student loan as far as my brother was concerned as he's finished with school he's going to work to take some of the burden off my parents and so an integral part of my journey when i was going to high school and university my brother is just eight years older but my brother was giving me money when i was going to university my brother was giving me a bank card with some little money and i knew how hard things were so i never used it he always said why don't you use the money and when i finished university he passed it on to my younger sister so in my family my older siblings kind of all played a role to open up the way for the younger siblings so even though they may not have been able to go on to the masters etc they paved the way they created opportunities for us they played their part so now my as the younger siblings we all went to university so now i don't really have younger siblings or other younger people but they're always family members etc and my jamaican mom is network you know if it is just to motivate people it is something that we do if it is encourage people that they can in fact achieve their goals despite the circumstances they're in it's also something that i do and so i always as i said in the conversation before where you start does not determine where you end. I mean, now people look at me and they'll be like, oh, you're well-spoken and you're in a good job and you're in this and that and whatever. And I'm like, you don't know how the journey started, you know? You yeah. do not know the struggles that were there. And mm -hmm. I never forgot a major point in my life. I think it was an exam that I did. I was in my community. I would encourage other people. I would always be helping them with their studying and et cetera. And when the exam results came out, I didn't pass. So, you know, so it, it's, it's things like these that are a major setback. Someone had asked earlier as well, you know, if you're not getting the scholarship, be proactive. My mother got down a Ministry of Education. I remember when I did common entrance and I needed to go on and stuff. And even when I was going to university in first year, I never get the big scholarship yet. That's a principal scholarship. But in first year, my mother got down to ministry and she said, listen, my daughter, is brilliant i don't have the money but i need to find a way to help her through university and she never stopped going on there and i don't know if the government have a scholarship scheme otherwise but they wrote a check and said that they're going to send some money to you as well and it was able to offset some of my first year expenses so i just want to make yeah. the point there are opportunities there you may not always i say you know i wish everyone had a mother like i did but i'm also aware that that's not the case right and so with everyone not having a mother like my mother the main thing that i would want people to say is look for influences you know as sharifa said as well you know what can she do to pay it forward what can all of us here do to pay it forward another thing i need to say as well is that with my brothers as well and education and the definitions we're going with so even though they may not have advanced along the same path educationally, like to say, all right, they went to college or they went to master's level, et cetera. My brothers are very skilled in their own rights. I look at it now and I say, my brother who took a very practical path, he built his house from scratch. He does not own NHD or nobody a red cent. So when you think of what right. success means, you know, I could look at my brother and say, my brother has mastered the art of being truly successful he has acquired a skill he has gained financial knowledge he has utilized that mix of practical and everything else to really get to a point that people who are educated to the highest level academically are still trying to grasp right. so i think in my story right. it's a mix of thing it's about what education looks like for some family members versus others but importantly if there's one thing i want people to take away it's about the importance of positive role models. Is there anyone here who is watching and you too have been able to ascend in a certain way through education, reach back down, you know, pay it forward, give a helping hand to someone. My company, Infinity, the, the details are scrolling on the screen. We're on Facebook, Instagram, and we're at website, infinityimc.com. I am committed to giving back as well to persons who went to the university. So I want to launch a scholarship program. It's something I'm also looking into doing for the high school that I went back to. So, you know, when you're blessed, you use the opportunity to bless others. And I know every 5,000 my brother used to give me when I used to go to school, it made a world of a difference for me. 5,000 may not seem like a lot to me, but for someone else, it may mean the difference if you can take transportation to go to school. So 
I know, you know education has opened doors for me. It has done a lot for me, but it was not a journey that I went on alone. There were so many people along this journey who really helped to make my life, the life of my siblings, etc. all the different parts we took, there were people there who helped us. So I want to encourage anyone who is watching, if you have any capacity to help someone else, just do it. Right, right. Man, Shanoi, as you're talking just now, um, <laughs> I'm actually seeing you back in the days. I'm actually seeing you back in the days. And um, I am proud of you. Um, you're always inspirational from school days. Um, and you know just just even as a student and it's amazing the inspiration you can be to others um without even knowing it sometime know it um but you're always out, outstanding and um your story is just moving and i i i, I just can say thanks for it um thanks for living it um because you living through your story it tells um it, it, it tells someone who is there is wondering, can I make it because I have so many siblings? Um, when I look at my siblings, perhaps they, they have not gone this path. Can I take this path? Will I make it? Um, but your story actually say it is possible. Um, wow, so 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 much experiences here. Um, I've had my, my own my own story and I always say, um, I'm gonna tell, I can't tell, no time to tell. Um, but but I've been through it. I know what outside lottery is. That's why I could jump off in that, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> I, I hope my brother, <laughs> my brother is watching because one night, um, <clears throat> yeah, one night when I know it's COVID time when you cough, everybody's wondering. <laughs> right? I preach. I preach twice today. I preach twice today. Uh, real hard in both of my churches. Uh, but um, one night I asked for some, my brother and my sister um, to come follow me to the bathroom. No one wanted to follow me. And so I had to, I had to go, right? <laughs> the, the next thing I hear was a big bang. <laughs> a big bang on the zinc, right? <laughs> I tell you, I was out of that bathroom unfinished. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. But um, friends, uh, whatever your circumstances, let me tell you, um, it's an opportunity for you. You got to live from it. Um, you know, I, I had 16 of us as brothers and sisters. Um, and um, so, you know, you spell poor back way. It still says poor, um, you know, and but the Lord elevates me um, not to be over anyone, but he elevates me to be of you know a greater use um, to others. I will tell my story um, in detail some other time. Um, but thank you, panelists. Thank you for you know sharing. Um, thank you for you know just educating us on this um, topic um, because indeed there is a way to be socially mobilized. Um, so um, on behalf of the entire team, um, Spence, who is the executive. Um, producer, um, an engineer. Thanks for making it Zoom Up Live. And um, we're going to allow you to listen to a young man. Um, we know he has a, a, a message for you in his song called Mountain. So whatever that mountain is, you can climb it and you can make it. Be blessed and see you next week as we will talk to some scholars, um, some individuals that did well in while they were studying and uh, you too can do well so see you next week life is just a big roller coaster yeah Every time I get a little older But I keep pressing on till I walk over Yeah I will be victorious as a soldier Cause there will be mountains that I've gotta climb There will be
be times when I think that I can fly There will be people filled with so much pride And that's when I rise Because it's best for my life There will be times when you think that you wanna die Just hold on and pray Because you still gotta fight Stand still and let God work in your life Just to feed those mountains you've got to climb Climb, climb, climb One time Just to feed those mountains you've got to climb Feed those mountains you've got